Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today I want to talk a little bit about VPNs a little bit more because we're in a situation where we are starting to move into this van. Right now I'm recording this from a very, very small town that I've never heard of prior to a few months ago when I learned about this conference that I'm at. And I gotta say, I am just enjoying it. Um, but the couple things you need to keep in mind. First and foremost, we're still looking for better, longer term internet. Um, I looked at my internet connection right now and uh, I have used about half of my available internet and I have 27 days left in my plan. Now, some of that was I was stuck on a Zoom call. I'm not sure how much of that went to the live stream the other day. All of that was, um, all of that was on the uh, was all on the same day. So I'll have to do another stream just to kind of see what's going on. But with that being said, I do need to use publicly available Wi-Fi, and this means having a VPN. So I came up with this question, is it better to buy a commercial VPN like one of our affiliates, ExpressVPN? So if you do need a commercial VPN, use our affiliate, tlm.li forward slash EV. That will get you a really good price for a commercial VPN. But there's another thing to consider. Do you need your IP address to change? Is it acceptable for you to be on a uh, on a VPN that people know is a VPN? Because some services might block you if that happens to be the case. And so I wanted to talk about this in this general manner. So you all know the advertisement. The creepy ISP will track you if you do not protect your connection. So use Ben. Um, never mind. Um, well, that's what all the advertisements say. The truth is, you may not need a VPN. I am not an advocate of using the VPN if we're talking about just sitting at your home internet just because you're either going to trust your ISP or you're going to trust your VPN company. Maybe there's some arguments one way or the other. But nevertheless, all of that being said, what we do want to look at is when you are moving out of your home internet, like I'm going to be doing a lot more here and there, then it's more pertinent to look at other options. So you might want to build a VPN on Linode. If you want to use our Linode affiliate and build a homebrewed VPN, Use our affiliate there, tlm.li forward slash Linode for $100 credit for 60 days. Now, that's the ending of the pitches. Uh, I'll maybe repeat those near the end, but let's talk about whether you should build a VPN or whether you should buy a VPN. So, first I wanted to look at this in terms of pros and cons. Let's talk first about the commercial VPNs. Now, Ultimately, there is a ton of these. Some of these are good. Some of these are really bad. I'm going to refer you to TechLore's channel because they do regular reviews of all these VPNs. They're going to be able to tell you what is good, what is not good in the course of running a VPN. So with that being said, um, I'm not going to tell you which VPN to go to other than you know, the fact that I do have an affiliate. There's other good ones that don't have affiliate accounts as well, like Proton VPN. I hear is good. Again, consult with TechLore's channel because they're always looking at this stuff. But let's look at three primary pros of using a commercial VPN. The first is you do not need to maintain it. It's easy. You just pay for it and it gets renewed. All you have to do is use it they will handle all the security. That is a big thing if you don't know how to maintain it, you don't want to know how to maintain it, or there's a few other factors to keep in mind. So definitely consider, do you want to be able to maintain it or not? Number two, GOD centralization. Now, what I mean by this is a commercial VPN will have connections and endpoints in several different countries. If you need to break out of a geolocation, a commercial VPN is absolutely what you're going to want to do with one little caveat that if you're a traveling international and you want to get back to United States geolocation, you can still do this with a uh, homebrewed VPN. However, you can't change that homebrewed location nearly as easily. So if you do need to bust out, maybe you're here, you want to watch a show on Netflix that's only in another country, you could use a VPN to do that as long as Netflix doesn't block VPNs. 
and that is one of the cons we'll talk about in a little bit. The third is they are easy to use. In general, a service that you pay for is going to be easier to use than a service that you have to build and maintain yourself. So this is yet another factor you need to keep in mind. Those are three pros of using a commercial VPN. What are the cons? Well, the three cons that I have picked out, number one, many websites will know you are a VPN and block you. You're using a VPN. Why do they do this? Well, a lot of it's just because some people use a VPN for shady and nefarious purposes. These companies, they don't want to deal with it. They just block all known VPN traffic. If you have a homebrewed VPN, they don't know it's a VPN because they don't have tons and tons and tons of connections coming from that one service. So that tends to, tends to be just fine. The second of the commercial VPNs is the cost can be higher. This is a very minor point because $100 a year, that's what my affiliate link's gonna cost at ExpressVPN, that's not really a problem. I think ProtonVPN might even have a free option. There's, for the most part though, if you have a free option VPN, you don't want to use it. Proton might be one of the outliers. Again, have a look at TechLord's channel to know for sure. The third is they might be tracking you too. If your entire idea, like Ben Shapiro says, go ahead and use our affiliate code, ExpressVPN slash Ben or whatever else, because your ISP is tracking you. Well, what stops your VPN from tracking you? You have to trust somebody at some point in time. Maybe that somebody is you. Maybe that somebody's where your servers are hosted or contracted out of. Maybe those servers are, you know, the VPN company. Some VPN companies have been tested in court and have been demonstrated to not be, uh, not be um, clogging your data. Okay, uh, is this is why is for a home internet? I, I don't bother with a VPN. If for the most part, if I need to bust out of my ISP, that's what Tails is for. I mean, come on. So you do place an extraordinary amount of trust in your VPN provider and they may be logging you too, even when they say they don't. That's happened many times. Trust in the VPN company is just as dangerous as trusting the ISP. So there's kind of your three cons of your commercial VPNs. So next, let's have a look at our custom VPNs. So this is, you're spinning it up on Linode. We're not talking about having a VPN in your home office. I've talked about that in other videos and in all honesty, um, that's okay, that's a great option. Uh, but that's not really what we're talking about in this case because I'm talking about being in this van, this is my home, it travels around, but I need to leave this to go into a coffee shop because I might be using too much internet. And so if I need to do that, I need something that's already in the cloud. That's why I spun up a VPN service, which took me like 20 minutes last night, so I can go ahead and use, uh, use VPN um, on a cloud-based system. That's only gonna cost me about $5 a month, and I'm not worrying about the backups or uh, any of the other, other services that Linode offers for simple installation, because it took me 20 minutes. If the thing goes down, crashes and burns, it's not gonna take me long to build it, rebuild it. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about custom VPNs. So let's look at three pros of custom VPNs. Number one, you control all of the data. You can know for a fact it's not recording logs because you control that server. You can go in there and you can disable all server logging. You can run a cron job that every two minutes is going to clear anything and everything off that server. Some FBI agent comes a knocking on the, the door of the hosting provider where your VPN company's at. They're like, we need this server. They pull out like, well, there's nothing here. There's a cron job that runs every two minutes. Crap. Okay. And so you control everything. When you host your VPN, you have full control over your service. You can disable or enable logging. You can set crons. Uh, maybe you do want to enable logging so you can see if anyone else is logging it. I don't know. Uh, you, you need to decide for yourself what you're going to do on that one. All right. Now, the second pro of running your own is you have better control over protocols. You can choose whether you want WireGuard or OpenVPN. Both of them have good options. There's some uh, pluses and minuses. I can't use WireGuard because my laptop that I used to write on is MX Linux without System D, and uh, yeah, WireGuard doesn't work without System D um, that I know of. Maybe you can, but I'm not going to mess with it. OpenVPN works just fine for me. Although it is faster, I'm not really concerned about that. You can set up blocking scripts on your host file. So I can go ahead and take my host file 
uh, I can deploy it on my uh, on my VPN host file, and that will block everything just like my home network does. These are advantages that I can do, and I can do custom block scripts. Sometimes your VPNs might block your commercial ones, might block something I need to access. And the ability to control what is blocked and what is not is a powerful thing. Number three is static location. This is one that is an interesting one. You may or may not want a static location. Let me tell you why it's important for me. I have two computers behind me. One of these computers is the one that I will use on running, uh, running Switch to Linux YouTube channel. The other one is my media PC. Every now and again, the media PC gets completely confused about where it is at, and YouTube is like, you need to like log in again to prove your identity. So I went and logged in the other day. It's still not happy. It says log in from a place you usually do. Oh, you mean the ISP company that I canceled last week that I don't have access to anymore? Thank you, genius. Fortunately, this other computer was logged in and it turned out I just needed to clear all data, browser, cookie, everything cache out of there. And then it did finally let me back into YouTube over there. Whew, that actually happened just about an hour before the live stream. I wasn't sure I'd be able to live stream the other day. Why did it do that? Because my IP address changed. By setting up a VPN, I can use a static location no matter where I am so that Google thinks I'm always in the same location. This is critically important for making sure I'm not getting geo-blocked out of stuff because it's like, we've detected a different IP address. We're gonna wrap your account. Thank you, genius. Hotmail is notorious for this, by the way. Um, so uh, that static location, I'm not worried about changing my location to this city or that city or whatever else for privacy. I'm more concerned that the services I need to use don't get confused about where I'm at, period. Now there are some cons. Number one con, you need to secure and maintain the system. You can't set it up and forget about it because eventually it's going to need an update. You have to maintain it, you have to update the server, you have to check for errors, and you have to keep the SSL up to date. These are not necessarily challenging things, but they are things you need to think about doing. Number two, there are no specialized apps. When you're buying ExpressVPN or some of these other ones, they will give you a good dedicated app to work with their platform. It will make connecting a whole lot easier. It's just so much simpler than the protocols. Now, can you still run it without? Absolutely. Android, iOS, you can get the OpenVPN protocol app to do that. I believe the same thing is available for WireGuard. Additionally, OpenVPN protocol is useful on nearly every Linux base that I know, and I know you can easily set it up in Mac and on PC as well. So you can use it, it's just going to be a little bit more complicated, but there are no specialized apps. Number three, there is no direct support. If you run into a problem, you are your own IT guy. You have to have the time, the availability, and the know-how to fix it. Now, that's not completely daunting. As like I said, I set this up on Linode. It literally took me 20 minutes. Anybody can go into Linode, use the affiliate account tlm.li forward slash Linode, create the Linode, go over into your marketplace, click open VPN, boom, you're done. Click on the documentation, you need to go into the um, IP address dot, uh, I think it's 943 slash admin or something, and uh, you go ahead and set it up, and then you can just use your hosting account, redirect a subdomain to that location, and it'll work just fine. And then, of course, I added the SSL, that's a separate thing for a separate day. So, with these ideas in mind, if you need a VPN, you should decide the best option for you. Do you need to do a commercial option or do you need to do an option that is, uh, that is um, uh, a custom brood? You need to decide for yourself what you wanna do. There's no right or wrong answer here. Maybe you even need a little bit of both. Take some time to reflect on these ideas to see what is best and important for you. In my case, what I did is I used my Linode account. I spun up another Linode with the open uh, VPN because that's gonna fit my needs. I'm not trying to geolocation break. I'm not trying to hide, you know, the change my location to different places. I literally want something that's gonna keep a static IP address and I wanna keep my costs a little bit lower right now. And so it's a little bit cheaper. It cost me $5 a month to spin that guy up. You can get it a little cheaper in some places, but $5 a month is, is pretty good. All right, so there is that. Additionally, um, additionally, I wanted to make sure that um, my IP address is not changing a lot. So those are my thoughts. 
Um, three pros, three cons of commercial and homebrewed VPN. If you do want to know how to create your own v VPN on Linode, I have a separate video for that, which will be linked in the cards on YouTube and in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.